Hey everyone, it's Kevin. Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to create this liquid 3D typography in Blender with Grease Pencil. This piece was actually featured in my Cyberpunk City as a billboard, and if you'd like to check out that process video, I'll leave a link below. Now, if you don't know what Grease Pencil is, it's an object in Blender that allows you to draw and animate directly in 3D space. And this makes Blender an ideal program for hybrid workflows. This piece is comprised of 3D meshes with a tune shader added and supplemented with grease pencil elements similar to these other pieces here. This tutorial is perfect for those either skilled in 3D or wanting to learn 3D but have a more traditional 2D background. It's not necessary to have a tablet, although it might be helpful to have one for some of the sculpting and grease pencil sections. I'll have a link below to a free download that includes the start and end project files. Let's get started. Here I'm in Blender using version 4.0 and with the start project file open. Again, you can grab this file from the free download found in the link below. The file will be denoted with underscore start. This start file includes a grease pencil object named background, which will be used as a reference point to position our 3D type, the focus of this tutorial. Make sure the viewport shading is set to solid and we'll start configuring some render options. Go to the Render Properties tab and we'll be using Eevee. Scroll down to Color Management and change the View Transform dropdown to Standard. This will make the colors appear accurate according to the ones in the picker. Then change the look to Medium High Contrast. This is a personal preference, but it'll make your colors appear more vibrant. Now we'll import the SVG file, which contains the vector paths for the easy lettering. This is custom type I created in another program, and it's included in the free download as well. To import it, go to File, Import, Scalable Vector Graphic, and select easy.svg. It'll import as very small curves for each letter and behind this grease pencil object in the viewport. Select all the curves by shift selecting them in the outliner, right click, set origin to geometry, then bring them forward in the Y. And let's rotate it upright with RX90. In front view with numpad 1, scale it out until it stretches over the quick lettering and rotate it slightly to the right. Make any other adjustments needed. With all the curves still selected, right click and convert to mesh. Tap into edit mode, hit A to select all the meshes, and E to extrude back in the Y to give it some thickness. Go back into object mode. Now, the texture on this lettering is a combination of sculpting the meshes and adding a tune shader, but there isn't a lot of geometry to sculpt, so we'll need to remesh them first. Select the E, go to the Modifiers tab, which is this wrench icon, click Add Modifier, type Remesh, and select it. With voxel selected, set the size to a very small value. I'm setting mine to 0.0004 meters and check smooth shading. When you're finished, link this to the other letters by shift selecting them, the E last to make it the active object and hitting Ctrl L to copy modifiers. After, hit Ctrl A and select visual geometry to mesh to apply the remesh modifiers on all of them. To help visualize this better, we'll add a tune shader onto the letters. Switch the viewport shading to Material Preview, and in the dropdown, toggle Scene Lights and Scene World. Go to the World Properties tab and set the background color to a dark blue, almost navy. Under Viewport Display, let's also set the color to white. This will be important for our grease pencil strokes later on as they can be affected by this value. Bring in a point light with Shift A. Move it closer in the Y, in front of the lettering, and a bit higher in the C. In the Object Data Properties tab, set the power to a higher value, around 50 watts. Change the dope sheet down here to the Shader Editor by clicking this button and selecting it from the list. Select the E mesh, and you'll notice it already has a material on it. Rename it to Easy Tune and check the Use Nodes box to the left. Now, there are many methods for creating a tune shader, so feel free to use whichever one you'd like. I'll be showing the simplest way to do so. Delete the principled BSDF with X and bring in a diffuse BSDF with Shift A. Connect it to the material output surface. 
This is to make sure we don't have any unwanted artifacts from the principled shader. Bring in a shader to RGB node and place it after the diffuse BSDF. The shader to RGB node is specific to Eevee and will not work in cycles. It simplifies shading details into colors, resulting in a tuned look. Lastly, bring in a color ramp and place it after the shader to RGB node. Change the dropdown from linear to constant, and when we move these sliders, you'll see it affects the color coverage on the letters using the color specified, black and white. I'm going to add two more sliders, and I'll set them to random colors for now to help in adjusting their positions. When you're finished, set the sliders to your desired colors. I'll make the far left a dark blue, the next a medium purple, the next a green, and the far right white. We'll move on to adding outlines around the letters, and we'll use the inverted hull method which consists of using a solidify modifier and a material with backface culling toggled. Like the tune shader, there are many methods for creating outlines, but I do prefer this one since it's simple to set up and the easiest to work with in real time. First, select all the letters and hit Ctrl A to apply scale. This is to ensure that the solidify modifier will display correctly. Secondly, go up to the overlays dropdown and check face orientation. For the outlines to appear, the faces will need to be in the correct orientation. If they appear blue, they're correct. But if they're red, select the mesh, tab into edit mode, select all and hit shift N to recalculate normals. When you're finished, toggle off the face orientation overlay. With the E selected, create a new material in the Material Properties tab named Outline. Change the surface to an emission and select a very dark blue color, or whatever you want the outline color to be. Under Settings, check Backface Calling and set the shadow mode to None. Go to the Modifier Properties tab and add a Solidify modifier. Under Normals, check Flip and under Materials, set the offset to 1 which corresponds to the material in that slot. To have this display correctly, set the thickness to a negative value. I'm setting mine to negative 0.01 meters. And then you should see the outline. Shift select the remaining letters, then the E mesh last, and copy over the modifiers and link the materials. I'm going to shift all the letters back towards the grease pencil object, but we'll pull the A and Y a bit closer for some depth variation make any other adjustments needed. Now to give the letters texture, we'll move on to sculpting. Select the E and go into sculpt mode. We can access sculpt mode by clicking the drop down up here or by hitting control tab and selecting it from the radial menu. And to start, it might be easier to switch the viewport shading to solid view. Now there's quite a few options here, but I want to start by getting rid of the jaggedness. So select the Smooth tool, which is this button here. You can also access it by holding down Shift and click dragging. And in general, to select any of the tools in a workspace, you can hit Shift Spacebar to bring up a list. We can also adjust the radius with F or the strength with Shift F. If you're using a tablet, you can use pressure controls, which are these buttons located here. When you're finished, move on to the remaining letters. Intermittently switch to Material Preview to see how it affects the shading. And to help us, let's just bring in a new window by hovering in the top right of the viewport until we see a crosshair. Then click drag to the left. Set the left viewport shading to Material Preview and the right to Solid and Continue. When you're finished, click back on the E and go into Sculpt Mode. Now, we'll start creating more texture detail. This is where we'll use the other sculpting tools to alter the geometry and affect the color coverage. Here, I'd like to use a combination of the Draw, Draw Sharp, and Blob tools. But feel free to experiment and use whatever tools work for your desired look. I'm not going to alter the meshes too much, just enough to vary the coverage a bit so I'm just going over each letter very loosely. Now, if this light source isn't working right with your coverage, feel free to move it or bring in another one to help and adjust the power until you get a look you're happy with. 
It is easy to get carried away here, so just be mindful with how much you're sculpting. When you're finished, go back into object mode. Now let's bring in another mesh to create a supporting design element. Bring in a cube and add a subdivision surface modifier with levels 2. You can do this easily by hitting Ctrl 2. Apply the modifier, then scale down the mesh, and then again in the X to lengthen it. Bring it forward in the Y, roughly aligned with our lettering. In front view, place it near the top left of the quick lettering, rotating it to match the slanted orientation. Like before, add a remesh modifier set to voxel, but this time set the size to 0.01 meters or whatever your system can handle. Check smooth shading and apply the modifier. Apply scale, then shift select the new mesh element, then a letter and hit Ctrl L to link over the materials and copy the solidify modifier. Sculpt as needed, starting with smoothing first. Then I'm just using the draw sharp, snake hook, and multiplane scrape tools to try forming an interesting shape. When finished, duplicate it in object mode and place it at the bottom right. Then make any other adjustments. With our sculpting done, we'll move on to working with grease pencil. Here's where I would suggest having a tablet, but if you don't have one, no worries as this part is completely doable with just a mouse. So let's switch the window down here to the dope sheet. Now we'll just use the grease pencil object already in here, but if you'd like to bring in a new one, make sure your playhead is at frame one. It's important to do this because grease pencil strokes can only exist where there is a keyframe. So once you bring in a new object, a keyframe is automatically created wherever your playhead is. This can cause some confusion to those that haven't used this tool before. So for example, I'll move the playhead to frame 70 and bring in a new grease pencil monkey. If I move the playhead before that frame in the timeline, it disappears and only appears at frame 70. So just always make sure that anytime you bring in a new grease pencil object, it's on frame one. And to bring in a new object, hit shift A, grease pencil, and select the appropriate one. If you're familiar with Grease Pencil, you can skip this part, but as a quick overview, let's click on the background Grease Pencil object. So each object consists of layers that can be found in the Object Data Properties tab and a list of materials that can be found in the Material Properties tab. So the layers are how strokes are displayed in 3D space, and by default, they show from top to bottom in a 2D orientation. Here we have the quick layer displaying in front of the background layer, and it's on top in the panel. So it maintains this visual hierarchy from every angle. This is very relative to other 2D design programs, but there is a way to have these strokes display according to their 3D location, regardless of the layer order. And you can do that here under strokes and changing the depth order to 3D location. So when I do that, it'll look glitchy, but if I move the quick lettering forward a bit, you'll notice it's gone. And if I move around it, it'll be obscured by the background, unlike the previous option. However, we're going to stick with the default depth order, which is 2D layers. There are many things to keep in mind when using 3D location, and I'll probably go over that in another video. And lastly, for the materials, I've already prepared them based on the original piece. But it's important to know that these are different from mesh materials. Grease pencil materials are also classified as either stroke and or fill materials. Now for this part, we'll work on adding the liquid drips on the letters first and then we'll finish off with the other design elements. Go to the layers panel and with your playhead at 1, create a new layer named liquid. In draw mode, switch the viewport shading to material preview so we can actually see where to draw. Let's also toggle the canvas overlay to see where our 3D cursor is, which is going to help us in stroke placement. They recently separated the grease pencil overlays from the regular viewport ones, so it's now under their respective button denoted by the grease pencil icon. Now, if you've never used grease pencil before, the two options here are your stroke location and orientation controls. These two determine how and where your strokes are drawn in 3D space. If you want a more in-depth walkthrough, you can check out my bakery tutorial in my channel playlist. So let's switch the stroke placement to 3D cursor and the drawing plane to front. 
This means that our 3D cursor will determine the stroke location in 3D space and they'll be oriented to front view facing the Y. I'll set the strength to 1, uncheck use pressure, and radius to 8 pixels, uncheck use pressure. With the draw tool selected, right click to make sure you're on the liquid layer and we'll start with the white paint material first. And I'll set both viewports to front view with numpad 1. I'll use my left viewport for reference and I'll toggle off overlays there by clicking this button. Shift right click on a white section of the lettering to place the cursor and draw these dripping strokes. Now you can adjust these strokes in edit mode or go into sculpt mode using tools like smooth or grab until you get a nice shape. Move around the stroke to make sure it's sitting nicely on the mesh face and if it isn't, go into edit mode to position it. Also, if your rotation seems off, you can hit numpad decimal to reset it. When you're finished, continue adding more drips to the white sections. Again, place the 3D cursor with shift right click, draw, and then adjust in edit or sculpt mode. If you like the look of one of your strokes, you can duplicate it in edit mode and place it as needed. Also, if your colors are different from mine, you can change them in your material properties tab. So let's say this white was actually a red. Just go to the tab, select the material from the list, and change the fill color as needed. You can use the color picker, but it may not be entirely accurate, so keep that in mind. Now I'll move on to adding green drips. So in draw mode, I'll place the 3D cursor over a green section and I'll right click to change the active material to green paint. Then I'll draw. Check the placement, make adjustments as needed, and then continue drawing. Lastly, I'll move on to the purple sections, selecting the purple paint material. It helps to make the drips non-uniform and varied in length. I'll also add the drips to the mesh design elements. This might be tricky depending on your mesh. With the drips finished, we'll move on to creating the additional grease pencil elements, most of which are in the background. Click on the background layer and in edit mode, select the background stroke. Set the cursor to it with Shift S and with your playhead at frame 1, create a new layer named Wave. Place it right below the liquid layer. In draw mode, right click to set the radius to 20 an active material to purple-o, which means purple outline. Create a wavy line that cuts through the middle of the composition. Then go into sculpt mode, smooth it out, and adjust its positioning with the grab and push tool. When you're done, select the thickness tool and go over the stroke, focusing on the ends. When you're finished, go back into draw mode. Right click to set the active material to green-o, and create another wavy line. Then in edit mode, let's actually select that stroke and go into sculpt mode. Toggle the stroke select mask here at the top so we only affect the green stroke and make your adjustments as needed. Again, I'm smoothing it out and then shifting its position. I don't really want it to follow the exact path as the purple stroke as I want it to feel loose and organic. Then I'll switch to the thickness tool and go over the stroke. I want it to stay relatively thin, so I'll thicken the ends a bit, but we'll lessen them in the center. And you can hold control while click dragging to switch between thickening and lessening. Go back into draw mode, right click and set the radius to a smaller value like 10 and set the active material to dark blue dash O. Create another wavy line, overlapping the previous green and purple line. In edit mode, select the stroke, go into sculpt mode, and adjust it as needed. Now to finish off this wavy line, go back into draw mode. Right click to set the radius to another smaller value, around 7 pixels, and the active material to white O. Create these white lines and dots within the purple one to emphasize it. Then set the radius to 5 pixels and create a few outside of it. In edit mode, deselect all the strokes, go to the material properties tab and under the white dash O material, press select to select all the strokes. Go into sculpt mode to make your adjustments as needed. 
Next, we're going to create some colored paint trails lining the wave. Create a new layer above the wave layer and name it Paint Trails. In draw mode, right click to set your radius to a thicker value around 10 pixels and set the active material to light purple O. Then create trails lining the wave line. Make any other adjustments. Back in draw mode, switch the material to green O and repeat. Lastly, repeat this process with the white O material. Now, I want these strokes to be slightly thicker and tapered at the ends. To do that, we can use a modifier. Go to the modifiers tab and add a thickness modifier. Set the thickness to three, but under influence, specify the paint trails layer. Check custom curve and create this downward bell shape with the handles. Now, I want to add an outline around these trails and to do that, go back to the layers panel and duplicate this layer by clicking this dropdown. Place it underneath the original layer and in the adjustments, set the factor to 1. Go to the Material Properties tab, copy the dark blue outline from one of the paint materials by hovering over the color box and hitting Ctrl C. Then paste it with Ctrl V in the tint color box. Set the thickness to 20 pixels and now we'll see the outline. However, it doesn't match the trails exactly and this is because the thickness modifier is only affecting the layer above it. To make sure it affects this layer as well, we can use a pass index. Under relations, specify a pass index of 1. Click back on the original layer and do the same. Go to the modifiers tab and under influence, Remove the paint trails layer and underneath that, specify a layer pass index of 1 and it'll affect both layers. The next thing to add are paint drops to accentuate the trails. Create a new layer above paint trails named paint drops. In draw mode, select the circle tool and right click to set the radius to 8 pixels and active material to purple paint. Create an oval and in edit mode, rotate it to be slanted. Then duplicate and add some around the composition, varying them in size. You can assign a different paint material to each duplicate by right clicking, going to assign and selecting the desired material. And I'll just cycle through the purple, white and green paint materials. I do like adding a drop shadow to these so let's duplicate the drops layer and place it underneath the original. In edit mode, hit A to select all and shift the duplicate drops at a downward right angle. Then go to the Material Properties tab, copy the stroke color of the paint materials, paste it in the tint color of the duplicates, and set the factor to 1. And now we have a drop shadow. Alright, almost done. The next thing we'll do is add white dots to tie the elements together. Create a new layer above the drops layer and name it stars. In draw mode, select the draw tool, then right click to set the radius to 15 pixels and the active material to white O. Click around the composition to add these dots and fill up the background. After, set the radius to 10 pixels and repeat. Lastly, I want to add some diagonal stripes to the background to make it more interesting. Create a new layer above the background layer, name it Stripes. Set the blending mode to hard light and opacity to 0.35. In draw mode, select the box tool and right click to set the material to white F. Create a rectangle about the width of the background and in edit mode, rotate it to fit the slanted angle of the other elements. Place it at the top right and bottom left parts of the composition. Duplicate or add a few more and scale them as needed. Go into object mode to check your work. Now, to make sure the strokes stay within the confines of the background, toggle masks and add the background layer by clicking the plus button. And I'm just adding them on the layers that actually come outside the stroke. There are many things you can do with masks, so feel free to experiment. And that completes our piece. Now, we'll set up a camera with some simple movement. Hit Shift C to set the cursor back to the world origin and bring in an empty. Select the camera in our scene and hit Alt G and Alt R to reset its location and rotation respectively. Then hit RX 90 to rotate it upright 
and set the left viewport to the camera view. Shift it in the Y until the piece is within frame. Parent the camera to the empty by shift selecting it, then the empty and hitting Ctrl P. When we rotate the empty, you'll see it rotates the camera view. At frame 1, rotate this empty to the left and hit I to keyframe its rotation. I do think this might change to K in a future version, so keep that in mind. Then go to frame 125, rotate the empty to the right, and keyframe the rotation again. Then duplicate the frames at 1 and place them at 250, and we'll have a repeating camera animation. And now we can render. But before we do, go to the View Layer Properties tab first, and under Data, make sure Z is checked. This will ensure Grease Pencil respects the Z space of meshes. If this option isn't checked, your meshes will not appear. Going to the Render Properties tab, check Bloom. Then go to the Output Properties tab and you can change the resolution here. And to make it higher quality, you can change the percentage here to 150 or 200, but feel free to do what your system can handle. To output this, it's generally recommended to do a series of images. Then you can take it back into Blender and export it via the video editor. But to do just a video, specify a file location, then in file format, select FFmpeg video. Under encoding, specify MPEG4 for container and for output quality, I like to use perceptually lossless. Then you can go to render at the top and select render animation. And that's it for the tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you do end up creating this, feel free to tag me on social media at Kev and Ram. And if you want to check out my other tutorials, you can find links to them below. But if you want something more in depth, you can check out my course Magic Storybook over at cgboost.com. In it, I'll walk through everything you need to know to get started with Grease Pencil. And we'll end up exploring techniques to create vibrant 2.5D scenes that move from beyond the flat page into dimensional space. Don't worry if you're not a drawing pro or are new to 3D. This course is totally beginner friendly. There's over 10 hours of content, downloadable project files, and access to help anytime you need it. Anyways, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks again and see you guys next time.